Good afternoon. Welcome to another edition of On the Table. My name is Jumwega, or simply Chimweka. Let me know where you're watching the show from by leaving a comment in the comment section. Now, it's about to rain, so I need to head inside. But I'm sure you can see some lovely cars over here. Hold it, hold it, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, Chimweka, wow. come here, come here, come here. Wow. The power of a man is in his pockets. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> VX 2.8, GD6, Toyota Fortuna, 4x4, switch machine. <laughs> Come here. He's taking over <laughs> just like that. Mm. By Tabo, Ford Ranger, XLT, 2022 model, sweet machine. Eat a bajo more, eat a quava. Ah, no need for intro. Heist, GL. Ha ha ha. Magnet Media. No Not yet another name span, no tissue. <laughs> ah, don't kill me, let's go. It's about to rain, um, but. Uh, I don't know, is there a madam inside? No, there's, there's no madam in the house. Feel free, there's just dogs around. There's no madam, but how come there's no madam? I'll tell you. Okay. I'll tell you inside. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's raining. Who knows, there might be some money showers inside. Uh, but while we are making our way in and taking a seat, here's what you can expect on the show today. I've actually had to work for each and everything that I have. Have you ever had students come to you as a lecturer and offer sex for grades? The only people that I can date, regardless of my qualification, are actually students. Who else can I date? I was 24, my girlfriend was 21. Um, what's the relationship with Ruth Roy? Who knows, maybe she'll use me for cloud. I mean, Ruth is a specialist at that. What really happened with, with Shazo? We're talking about over 340,000 kwacha. I mean, Shazo's family only got a 2,000 kwacha. Who's the highest paid influencer? So I've had to work with uh, people that you guys suppose are enemies. Kidist uh, had stopped working at one point. And she actually just came out to me and told me, say, hey, I, I think you've been bashed on these deals and whatnot. She complained about it. So when I brought Kidist back, and then I was also working with Mizukanji, all of a sudden Mizukanji just stopped working with me, and she blocked me. Yo, what's good? What's poppin'? It's your girl, Cleo Ice Queen. Keep watching On the Table with Chimweka. So that's what you can look out for in today's edition of On The Table. But let's get straight into our discussion for today with my guest, who is a person who's branded himself as the best marketer in Zambia and also known as uh, the boastful um, social media personality. He was also nominated at the Diamond TV Personality of the Year Awards. Allow me to welcome the one and only Magnet. How are you doing, brother? Uh, Chimweka, I'm all right. How are you? I'm okay. Thanks for welcoming us uh, at your place, yeah. Yeah, okay. Good to see you. Uh, welcome to the Magnet Media House. Uh, so this is our state house as well. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I mean, even just the fact that you have Magnet uh, Media House. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about how this all came together. The fact that you decided to open this place. You were just telling me that it's, you've been here for about a year or so. Um, what, what was the whole idea of, of even coming up with the whole Media House? Okay, so um, I, I, uh, this, this concept actually of, uh, of me coming on media mm. uh, started three years ago. Uh, so what happened, uh, my first deal with One Xbit required that I get influencers. Mm. So by then, I was just a lecturer. So what happened is uh, I wanted to create for myself a platform that would actually welcome influencers and also create trust. Mm. And then uh, everything has just been falling in place. Yeah. So, so that's where the, the name came from, Magnet, because you, you pull the influencers to you. Uh, not really. Uh. Actually, the Magnet name comes from, uh, from school. Okay. Uh, you know, you know I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a master's holder in, uh, in nuclear physics. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've actually been studying physics for like 10 years. Mm -hmm. So uh, only the Magnet name was actually going from uh, the topic uh, magnetism. Oh, okay. Yeah, so right. that's where the Magnet concept came from. Yeah. And then I just had to translate it to the business end and then uh, changed to Magnet. Uh, I see. Yeah. So I, I think people have known that, that, that part of your, your background or some people know that you were a lecturer at the university. Next thing they're seeing you with big cars and, and all these things. But let, let's, let's understand. So you, were, uh, you studied physics. Yes. And you said lecturing in physics yes. at the University of Zambia. Yes. So you were a lecturer and you decided to leave and, and stop lecturing. How, what, what, what made you even arrive at that decision? 
Okay, so uh, like I explained earlier, so I, I went to Russia. I studied physics for 10 years. Mm. So by then, this media thing was never in me. Mm. The idea was to be a scientist, a physicist, and a lecturer. That was like the main, main goal. Mm. So uh, by then, I started lecturing at the University of Zambia. And then uh, it so happened that uh, one expert came in and they wanted to market their product here in Zambia. So that's how I had to adopt. So, so, uh, so how did you even... How did they? How did you know each other? How did you meet uh, with, with the one expert people? Oh, with one expert people. Okay. So uh, while I was a student in uh, in Russia, mm. um, I used to do a part time job at one expert. So I would go to school uh, during the day, and then at night I would be working for one expert. Mm. So by then I was just like an uh, an employee. Okay. Okay. So I was just uh, working actually on uh, on servers in Uganda. Okay. Zambia. So and then uh, when my visa expired. I came back to Zambia here, but then when I was coming back to Zambia, the idea was never to work for one expert. Mm. Okay. The idea was to actually uh, go into the field that I was interested in, which is nuclear physics, and I started lecturing at the University of Zambia. So when one expert wanted to launch, okay, so they wanted to launch in Zambia, now they had set up, they had gotten their license and whatnot, uh, they sent some money to an influencer here in Zambia, I don't want to mention their name, and then uh, that influencer failed to withdraw the money. Okay, so now this is how someone from one expert office in Russia actually called me to say, oh, fine, can you help us withdraw uh, some money from this, this account and give them the money? So uh, that's how I actually started working with them again. So even right now, I do not officially work with one expert. I just have, uh, I give them strategies and selling points to market in Zambia. Mm, so you're sort of like a marketing consultant? Yes. Okay. Yes. But before we even come to now, you you working with them and helping them get influencers here, uh, just you being a, a lecturer, what, what was that like? Um, dealing with students, uh, interacting with them, what was that experience like for you? Okay, um, so the, the dream and, and the passion was actually to be a teacher. I have always wanted to be a teacher, okay? So uh, even when I was doing the job, it was actually interesting Yes, they could see a, a youngster there. By then, I was 24 years old, lecturing. And then uh, students would come in. They would want to interact. And it was actually fun. It was nice. Mm. But then uh, when I joined media, that's where the pressure started. So what started happening is uh, I had my media life and I had my professional career. Mm -hmm. So the two are actually mixing up. Mm -hmm. So I might find uh, uh, the pressure from media is coming. And then there's also uh, the idea that people have of you uh, in the professional career there would also mix up. So I find I'm getting calls from uh, from the vice chancellors. At one point, there was a story that was trending to say, no, he's been fired because he was dating a student and things mm -hmm. like that. So yeah, so it became pressure for me uh, up until I just said, okay, fine, let me uh, quit for now and then let me give it time and then uh, maybe next year I might go back and teach because mm -hmm. I'm actually passionate about that. I love it. I want to do it. But but speaking of dating students, have you ever dated a student as a lecturer? The, the person I was dating then was actually a student, but then she wasn't my student. I was in the School of Natural Sciences. She was in the School of uh, Humanities. Mm. So yes, I'm allowed to date. I mean, why not? Okay. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't from, from the ethics you're taught about and, and all of that as, as lecturers, it's, it's allowed for you to date a student as long as they're not from uh, your, 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 the school you're teaching, your lecturing rather? Okay, um, I, I, I don't know about uh, the ethics, mm. okay? Uh, but you have to understand this. Um, I started lecturing when I was 25 years old. Mm. Okay, 24, 25, 24, 25 years old. Okay, yeah. somewhere there. And then uh, the only people that I can date, regardless of my qualification, are actually students. Who else can I date? I was 24, my girlfriend was 21. The only people that I can date, regardless of my qualification, are actually students. Who else can I date? I was 24. My girlfriend was 21. Ethical entanglements and all of that. No, you can't control people like that. So uh, it, it actually got to that point at the university where I got questioned. The police would come and ask, no, this ABC and whatnot, you're being a threat to security. Whenever I went to campus, like students would come to me, oh, magnet this, magnet that, magnet ABCD. So it reach that point where it became toxic for me. Uh, there's, there's, there's been an issue now, the Anti-Corruption Commission, I don't know if you followed this, but the Anti-Corruption Commission recently uh, expressed concern over the rise now in what they're calling extortion, 
sex for grades. Have you ever had students come to you as a lecturer and offer sex for grades? Mm, no, I've never had that. No. It's never happened. Really? No, not really. So they just like to you as, as magnet, but not reaching that extent? Yes. Uh, okay, what, what used to happen is, uh, while I was lecturing at the University of Zambia, uh, my salary was actually dedicated to my students. All my earnings from the University of Zambia used to go back to the students. So I'd come up with different concepts. Maybe in class I give them uh, work, uh, whoever responds well, I give them maybe money to buy food and stuff like that. So I was doing that for passion. I wasn't doing that for money. So even if a student actually was to approach me to say, okay, find this and this and the BCD, I don't think I was going to go for it because I knew what I wanted. Did you ever also get uh, students sort of trying to intimidate you because you're young? Because I know that in some classes, I mean, I've also been at Unza and you're in the same class with people who are much older. Uh, but did you ever get that, that experience as well? No, no, that never happened. Uh, I'm actually professional. When, mm. you, when, you, when you actually find me teaching, and the order that was there in my classroom could tell, okay, this person has done methodology. This person is a leader. This person is actually a teacher. Mm. Yes. So now we move on now from you being the lecturer to taking up uh, the media space okay. sort of full time, right? And what comes in between is people seeing all the things that you apparently boast about and, and, and show off on, uh, on, on the media platforms. And people wonder, how did you get to that point? How uh, you, you were a lecturer and now you've got all these things that, you, that are quite expensive that you own. How did it get to that? Uh, if, if, um, if you remember very well, when I, when I came on media, I came up with uh, what I used to call the Magnet Empowerment Fund. I used to empower small scale businesses uh, and promote different uh, small businesses in the country. So. Uh, what I wanted in return was actually numbers. Like I told you initially, I wanted to be on social media. I wanted to have the numbers when I realized to say I could actually make money off social media. So I'm not an artist, I'm not a comedian, I'm not all these musicians and stuff like that. So I needed to find a way that actually works for me on social media. So I came up with the empowerment fund. Uh, it didn't give me the clout that I wanted. But then uh, when I posted my vehicles and stuff like that, people actually tagging along, people would criticize. And over time, I've actually gotten used to it and uh, it's actually playing out very well. Mm. Yes. So, you, you, so you decided to continue with the whole boasting? Yes, because it's, it's actually working. And then uh, the, uh, the other reason as to why I'm doing that is because uh, uh, I'm, I'm someone who's never been gifted everything in life. So okay, I get this. Okay, I've actually had to work for each and everything that I have. Okay, so um, why not take pride in your achievement? Because you might not know who you are actually inspiring. Even if I post a car that costs 1.5 million, 1.3 million, the point for me there is actually to motivate someone to say, hey, I can actually do it. Okay, hey, I can actually have this as well. But then if you look at from another point of view, and you know how Zambia is, mm. obviously you get a lot of criticism and mm. whatnot, whatnot. So that brings controversy and I like it. I embrace it. I like it. I enjoy it. So, but still, the question that comes in is, where did the money come from? Is it when you, when you, uh, when, when you resigned from your job, were you given a certain, certain amount of money? Or is it like from, because you said again, your salary was being dedicated towards your students. So... Where, where exactly did the money come from to afford these things? Okay, so uh, b before coming to media, I was actually marketing uh, products on social media using different influencers. Okay, so uh, for example, I gave you an example of, of, uh, of one expert. So one expert would send huge amounts of money to uh, market with influencers. Okay, so from there I used to get very huge commissions, very huge money and whatnot. Oh, that's okay. where I started from, yeah. Oh, so there's, so there's a lot of money from Yes, from yes, those. yes. Because I'll tell you, promos from one expert are obviously expensive. For me to post a promo on my page, which has them a lot. So that's a lot of money. Mm. A very big deal. Yeah, so that money was enough to it was, get It was enough to kickstart. Mm. Okay, and then everything else has just been falling in place, different deals here and there. And then um, I've also had to grow my network. So my network right now is actually big. I know a lot of people. People trust me with money. And then... Uh, We've just built from there.
and here we are. So how many, how many influences do you have at the moment? Right now, um, 45 in Zambia, mm -hmm. and then uh, we have 8 in Ghana, and I have another 10 in Nigeria. Mm. Yes. So you, you're making money out of all these yes, influencers? Like this. Okay. On different products. So who was, who was your first influencer in Zambia? Ah, the first influencer in Zambia then was uh, HD Empire. Ah, okay. Though it, it didn't work out up until I brought in uh, Shumumbi. Mm. So from Shumumbi, the game changers were Shezo and Mjomba. Okay. Yes, Shezo. I remember you, you had a very, very uh, close relationship with, with Shezo. At some point, I, I even thought you, you were Shezo's manager. <laughs> like you, you were very, very close. I, I remember I used to watch a lot of Shezo and Jomba. I've, I've been a very big fan of Shezo, his, his, his rise. And also his, his four brought a lot of attention and you got involved because people thought ah, these are the people who are close to, to Shezo. What really happened with, with Shezo? Okay, so um, one expert dedicated uh, 38,000 kwacha on promos that involved Shezo. Okay. So uh, these monies were actually paid to these people. And then uh, only uh, after six months to find out that uh, Shezo only got 2,000 kwacha from all the monies that were paid. So if you do 38,000 times one year, we're talking about over 340,000 kwacha. And then Shezo's family only got a 2,000 kwacha. Okay? So now Shezo used to refuse to work. And then uh, now this comes on media, he's not working on ABCD, ABCD is being found drunk and whatnot and whatnot. And then what made it worse was that part where he spilled alcohol mm -hmm. now. The wedding. wedding. Yes, yes, yes. So I, I realized uh, Shezo was, uh, was not, okay, you know, Shezo growing up has been abused. This is one thing that we don't understand. You know, him being uh, disabled and whatnot, so everyone has had to laugh at him and whatnot. So I took him for psychosocial counseling and stuff like that. So when that happened, uh, my intention was to uh, make people understand to say we are dealing with a person that has been abused all his life. We are dealing with a person that has been laughed at all his life. And the only person that could protect Shezo at that point was me. And I was like, okay, let me do it. Let me embrace it. Let me bring him close and let me try to understand it. So that's why I was actually defending Shezo. And on top of that, he was sitting on a deal that involved a lot of money. So obviously, I needed to protect that deal. So what was the problem? So are you saying Njomba was a problem? They were all working together. I don't know. On that one, I can't comment. I think uh, that story is uh, very emotional for me uh, because I had to deal with it. I, I'm someone who used to see Shezo wake up crying at night. Okay, So I don't want to actually speak much about that. Mm. But it is what it is. And... and now, what, what's the situation now? Because it seems like his story has gone quiet and people have abandoned him again. Uh, are, are you still actively involved in his, his life, his welfare? Okay, so Shezo now is in Chingola, mm. and I'm here. Yeah, we get to talk here and there, but then uh, there's a lot of things that need to be cleared up for him to come back. But I hope, I hope he'll be back. Mm. Yeah, and I hope he's actually very well. I hope he's doing fine. Yeah, and, 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 and when people involved you and uh, asked to find out uh, what the, why the situation is like that when there's people like you around. I mean, how did you manage to deal with that as well, especially with the, the public uh, expectations? Okay, so the, the problem was there. The man had already gone. The complaints were there. Okay. Mm. So uh, what do I do? Uh, the only thing I could do is just bring shares of clothes mm. and then uh, make him understand to say, we have a problem here and uh, we are not going to proceed with the work. You know, it was very, very hard for me to actually reach out and tell him that. Mm. And then uh, later on, he just died. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, that's how come we don't see Shezo anymore. We're going to take a break. When we get back from this break, we continue interacting with uh, Magnet. We'll talk about much more awards and also some of uh, the influence. Should we call them influencers or ambassadors? What, what do we call them? Um... We'll call them influencers. Influencers? Yes, we'll call, we'll call them influencers. Okay. In fact, I also have something to ask about that, influencers and ambassadors. So we'll talk about that after this break.
Welcome back to watching On the Table. My guest is Magnet, and we're talking about a whole lot uh, around around his life. And just before the break, we we're talking about um, uh, you influencers and ambassadors. So, have have you had ambassadors like an ambassador for for one expert? Uh, yes. Uh, at one point, we had we had Slab Sub D, D yeah, as, I as the ambassador. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we worked for one year. Mm. And then after that, uh, we have been picked in. Mm. Because, and and uh, you didn't decide to renew? Because I've taken it up. You've taken I mean, up the... I mean, so I'm, you're I'm, the ambassador. I'm not the ambassador, but, uh, but come on, I give the face for one expert. Everyone knows. When you think about one expert, think about Magnet. What, 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 um, what's the criteria behind who gets chosen? Okay, so I get to pick. Okay. I get to pick who promotes our content. So I look at different uh, creatives, I, what creativity they have and what not, what they're working on, mm. and also the numbers they're pulling. Mm. And then uh, obviously I contact them, like, okay, hey, would you be interested in marketing our product? Uh, can you do ABCD, ABCD? Okay, yeah. so one expert wants to work with you. Okay, go ahead. Here, prepare them and then start. So, but, but are there other agents? Uh, or do you even consider yourself an agent? Is, is it right to say you're an agent? Okay, so I'm, I'm not an agent. Mm -hmm. I don't work for one expert. Mm. One expert calls me okay. for strategies in Zambia because they are not in this location. So, so not everyone who has a promo code is from you? Nope. And promo code is actually free. You could actually also customize yourself a promo code on the one expert site. They're free. Oh, really? Yeah. So, but, but the revenue... Uh, mechanisms become different, I'm guessing. Yeah, it? obviously it becomes different. But if you're working with me, obviously I have to pay you upfront, and then uh, it's a lot of money. So you're the highest paying promo code creator, if I can put it that way. Yes, I should think so. Um, I should think so. Mm. Uh, the best in town. Who, who's, who's, the, who's the highest paid influencer? Highest paid? Yeah. Kidist. As of now, Kidist. Mm. Yeah. Because of, I uh, guess, her numbers and all of that. Kiddies, kiddies, kiddies post numbers. A lot of controversy, yes, mm -hmm. but she post numbers. Okay. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, Dinema should be somewhere up as well. Yeah. Also, Emma is doing fine. Maz is also doing fine. Ken mm. Dumbo, they're all up there. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay they, they, they can't complain. I'll tell you, my people work very well. They're very professional. Mm. And I'm sure they're happy. Everyone is happy. This yeah. is why we've been able to work together for two years plus now. Yeah. Speaking of... Uh, and Dina Imar, Chanda, Chanda Bryan, Kidist as well, they're also nominated for the Diamond TV Personality of the Year Awards. Uh, you attended, um, even though some people thought you wouldn't attend because you needed a boasting uh, category and, and so on. But you were nominated. Just the fact that you were nominated, did that give you the feeling and impression that, wow, I, I've really created a brand for myself online and, and people really think I should be nominated and nominated you? Okay, yes, okay. I, I, I loved the gesture. Thank you so much. And to everyone that supported, that voted, thank you so much. Uh, I, I, I loved uh, the energy it came with. Uh, however, uh, you guys put me in the same category with people that promote my product. So in as much as I was asking... But by you people, I hope you're talking to them because it's them who nominated. Yes. It's, and and yes. not us. So they put me... Too. They put yeah. me uh, in a category with people that have actually worked with me. Mm. Okay, so I consider them to be the social media influencers. Okay, I mean, they are the ones with the numbers. They are the ones that push the work. But then to find myself there, obviously, was good. But then uh, it so happened that I was competing with people uh, that I work with. Um, I mean, it happens. Isn't that normal? You, you can be in the same record label as somebody, and uh, for example, musicians, and you still get... Uh, nominated, so it's it's not exactly a bad thing, is it? No, it's it's not a bad thing, no. Yeah. So is it because I, I maybe I'm trying to say that the fact that you in, the fact that you're in the same category, you felt like you're going to lose. Ah, uh, you know I'm, I'm a serial winner. When you look at me, I'm a serial winner. And uh, if we if we just were to look at it genuinely on the numbers to say uh, who's doing the most on social media, I feel I deserve to win. I'll be honest, I feel. I deserve to win. More than Mwizu uh, Kanji, more than, uh, who else was in your uh, category? Those Kidists. Kidists. Those Ben Lombe. 
So you feel that you're doing more yes, than if, all these if, people? If, if you're looking at social media, yes, and uh, uh, placing products on social media and reaching out information. Like I told you, most of the influencers work with me. I bring you to the table to go on social media. So who's actually influencing social media? Think about it. But then even when you're influencing, you also capitalize on these people. You capitalize on their brands. You, cap you, you need a kidist I pay. to... to I exactly. Pay. You pay because you know that they have influence. Because if, if it, they didn't have as much influence, you'd have used your platform alone without having to engage any one of these influencers. E e exactly. Exactly. This brings back to my point. Mm. Uh, if you look at social media alone and influencing, you have to look at the product getting to the people. So I have the product, maybe they have the people. I don't know if you understand the point. But if you talk about influence, isn't it about the people? Yeah, it's about the people. Yeah. But you have to have a product to sell to the people. Chumaka, mm. don't tell me you don't know how people vote in Zambia. Mm. Exactly, you know what I mean. So it's because they had the people. Yes, they had the and, and you didn't have as much people as them. I, I, I don't think so. How, how, how do you guys uh, allow people to vote 100 times? Because, because now this, this brings a lot of questions to me. How do yeah. you guys allow people to vote 100 times? So what, do you what, think? What, 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 what problem comes with that? Because isn't that supposed to be to your advantage as well? No, it doesn't have to be like that. One person, one vote. That's how it works. And there's a number of platforms where this is it's allowed. Um, you, you have somebody who can vote. Now, I, I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, there are a lot of... Uh, categories that Diamond TV puts out. Mm. Apart from the social media influence of the mm. others are entrepreneurs of the and whatnot. Mm. We have a lot more people that are doing more but are not on media. Mm. How do you cater for those people? Uh, interesting enough because if, if you actually um, paid attention to what was constantly said, mm. there were 30 categories, 20 are open for public vote, 10 are left technical and entrepreneur of the year for example was one of them photographer of the year was one of them Th those are not up for public vote okay. so it was a committee of industry experts who sit down and judge even actra ac actress and actor of the year was not up for public vote because in the past it was noted that uh, people were just it was like a popularity contest so you have people like mr lawrence thompson these are these are industry experts who who sit down and say well these are going to be our nominees. It won't, won't, they won't put it out for public. Okay. And then people vote. So that, that was happening. Why didn't you put me in that category? Because yours was a social media category. It was a social, the social but, media but I'm, I'm a influence of me. I'm a serial entrepreneur. So maybe that's for the committee to, to review. So maybe so how, how, how are they going to know about it? How are they going to know about what? Yeah. But I'm, I'm actually an entrepreneur if I don't put it out there on media. Well, that's for them too. That's something you need to sit down and perhaps ask mm. the committee and and what criteria there is. But before we digress, before we digress, while we're at the awards, um, I, I noticed you sitting next to Ruth Ronnie. Mm. Um, what's your relationship with Ruth Ronnie? Okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, Ruth Ronnie uh, is a business associate. So if you look at her page, she's got a promo code. So we work together in that line. That's it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 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 asked, I asked this uh, for a reason. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, there's a point, and I, I bet you got this as well, where people thought there was something going on between you and, and Ruth Ronnie. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think, you know, from what my team also gathered, is that is a time, I think she was flown here to Lusaka, she came to have some KFC, and then people spotted it. We know this number plate. This man gets uh, another play. And people said, wondering, there must be something special going on. And the two dating. Uh, no, we've not talked about that. Who knows? Maybe trying to use me for cloud. I mean, Ruth is a specialist at that. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 so Ruth has been trending from the time I was 14 years old. What do you mean? Whoa, what? Wait. Wait, how old, how old are you, Magnet? I'm 28. Really? Yeah, I'm 28. Is that, is that like real age yeah, or my age? Real age, 28, 1995, 6th July. So uh, how, how, do you, how, do you, how do you feel for people who think you're much older? Uh, they're allowed to. I mean, they're allowed to. Mm. I, I, I don't 
focus more on my age yeah because I've, I've actually had to grow uh, very fast and my body doesn't look like someone's 28 and looking at the responsibilities obviously a few successes here and there mm. obviously it's, it's it's hard for someone to believe that i'm actually 28. yeah yeah but but i gave you an example i started lecturing when i was 24. 24. yeah so so you're saying you, you lectured for not even five years not even five years i've lectured for three years three years two three years so three years and you say i'm done let me move on yes uh, and did you also leave because you felt okay maybe there's there's more opportunities and more money this other side um i i left because the environment became toxic for me the whole security issue yes like i i didn't feel secure in my lectures i used to to go with uh with a security guard and a driver could be like three of us when i'm teaching mm. you get the point i needed to come with at least two vehicles when teaching with other people my inch meant to be there and around no so has has do you feel secure now do you feel more secure now ah uh, because you've got a public life now and uh there's so many dynamics that come with entrepreneurship and the work you do okay so so um feeling secure not 100 percent um obviously i have to to make sure my security is intact and things like that but then um, i want to go back and teach next year so we'll see how it happens do you think you managed to balance both this and hopefully hopefully i can manage okay so, uh, with, with, with your experience, your age and the work that you do, have, have you been at a point where um, maybe you've lost some deals or you've lost some, some agreements because of your age? Maybe you feel you're too young? Uh, okay, um, I'm, I'm not someone who goes and asks for deals. Mm, they come I, to you? I, I, deals come to me or I try to create my own. I'm a creative person. Mm. I spend 90% of the time alone. Mm. Yes. So that's how it is. So I, I think of ideas and whatnot. And right now, if you ask me, do I want to work for someone? No, I don't want. I can't even manage to work for someone. So the only thing that I can do is actually get creative and do things that I love. Mm. Because obviously the motivation is not money at this point. Yeah. yeah. With all the influences that you have, I mean, you've got big names under your your wing, if I can put it that way. Mm -hmm. uh, what has it been like also managing and dealing with these big influencers? I mean, they have, they've got big names and got big brands, and um, they also come with their own terms and conditions. How, how have you managed to uh, still work with, with all these influencers? Okay, so it has come down to, to understanding... Uh, the kind of personalities they have and uh, and also their story on social media okay so I've had to work with uh, people that you guys suppose are enemies for example I've worked with Muzukanji and Kidist okay on my promos so right now I will tell you that me and Muzukanji don't talk uh, she's blocked me we don't talk why uh, I don't know she has her reasons I don't know but she never told me um, uh, maybe let me understand this. So, you've got Kidist and Muzuk. Who, who came first? Uh, Muzukanji came first. Okay. Yes, and then I brought in uh, Kidist as well. So, so Muzukanji blocked you after you brought Kidist as an influencer? Uh, when I brought Kidist first, I don't know if, if that's the reason, but when I brought Kidist first, so when I brought Muzukanji first, uh, I allowed Kidist to come in. And then uh, Kidist, uh, had stopped working at one point. And she actually just came out to me and told me, say, hey, I, I think you've been bashed on these deals and whatnot. She complained about it. So when I brought Kidist back, and then I was also working with Mizukanji, all of a sudden Mizukanji just stopped working with me and she blocked me. So I don't know. So it's, it's a lot of pressure. I work with people like Ken Dumbo, uh, different personalities, very understanding and whatnot. I work with Indine Ma as well. So it's, it's different people, you know, being a leader uh, takes a lot of understanding. So it's, it's something that has been uh, growing gradually with time. So uh, people work like this, people function like this. So it's, it's been a learning process for me. You, you understand my point? It's been, it's been a learning process where I, how I used to manage my influencers last year and this year are uh, two different uh, things. And, and this also, again, 
prompted me to come to media because at one point influencers would do whatever thing they wanted to do without promoting my product okay so like i had to bend for them to market my products but from the time i came on media uh they know like, mm, he's also able to market so if he's actually doing it we can also do it and that has also actually helped me reduce on the cost mm. so um you've not tried to reach out to muzu kanji ever since nope you just you don't care ah it's life it happens but and and at the time you were working well muzu kanji was too on and kidis kidis never ex- expressed anything or showed any signs of being uncomfortable no, no. at, at one sense. point she stopped kidis stopped at one point when i asked her to come back she told me say i was uncomfortable in this deal because i didn't feel uh favored in this deal so she told me that opened so where, where does the issue of the biasness or favoring where, where could it possibly come from is is it based off the amounts you have to offer is it um is is even the amounts you offer is it in public knowledge how much no it's 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 not in public knowledge but uh they all get paid in the same range okay they get paid in the same range so I'm actually very fair in terms to that so I don't know they have their own reasons or other things that do you give like different tasks or different things to do for the different influencers because for someone to say um you're being biased with how you're going about this or you're favoring this other person it means there must be something that was going on for you to to for someone to express something like that it means this they must have felt like you're doing something different for this other individual and not doing that for them okay so uh you see uh part part of my introduction on media mm. involved Muzu Kanji when I was launching Magnet I'd invited uh, Muzu Kanji at that point I didn't know Kidist so uh if you ask people when they look at my brand and everything some would tell you know we knew from Muzu Kanji some would tell you we knew from Shezo mm. some would tell you we knew from class you used to be a lecturer or some say okay, we knew from this post that you posted uh on media and it caused a lot of controversy and whatnot so uh yes so there was that part I was working with Mizukanji and then I brought in Kidist and then Kidist left Mizukanji remained and then uh, Mizukanji left and then now there's a Kidist so it's it's a lot managing people is a lot it involves a lot you know people come in with different attitudes today they want to work today they're excited they want you to be happy when you're not in the mood <laughs> and and these are adults you get the point these are adults some of them are married uh, abc some of them are older than me and 45 people in zambia is a lot okay and i need to satisfy my clients at the end of the day mm. so it's uh, it's actually a lot of work but uh, away from kiris mizukan do you have any experiences with any other influencers it's it's normal very very normal why you pay someone they don't work for for one month and then come and post videos after two months Mm. Yes, or maybe you pay them money and then they just come and do basic work and what not. It's it's there. It's 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 all part of life. Mm. Then if you have to end the deal as well. You have to end the deal. Sometimes I have to call off a deal that yeah. was actually uh, a good deal involving a lot of money. I have to cancel it and say okay fine guys, we are not going to proceed with this deal okay. because of A B C D A B C D A B C D. Lastly, um 2024 is around the corner. You mentioned that you want to get back into uh lecturing. Any other plans that you have? Big okay. plans? Like you've seen I'm about to launch uh Magnet Media. Oh, so it's not officially launched. It's not officially launched. So right now if you see all these cameras what not that we're putting in place, mm-hmm. we're just trying to to invest more before an official launch. Okay. So right now yes we're operating in the background, mm-hmm. but we're yet to officially launch. Okay. So it's it's something I'm actually excited uh, about. I'm looking forward to it and I know uh a lot of people who feel who be empowered, most of the youths. I know I'll be creating are platforms for different use more especially content creators creatives engineers all these guys are that are doing these works mm. uh, i mean you offered chichi and i a job so we'll, yes, we'll come and apply here yeah, just, just apply apply find it magnet it's been awesome thank you so much for for having us here and uh, looking forward to interacting with you further all right cheers thank you uh, that has been our conversation with my guest today magnet we're back again next week for another edition of on the table my name is jumega simply chumeka bye bye